So, Mark, Las Vegas is a desert, and we have cacti all around, including desert landscaping in our communities. And two men are accused of, uh, I guess, setting up an entire scheme to steal cacti and then sell them on Facebook Marketplace. They got caught because they went to Cadence over and over again. I don't even know what to say about this story. The guy stealing copper, at least, you know, he was going to a work site. He knew that was valuable. I don't know how much you're selling cacti for on Facebook Marketplace. What, 20 bucks a pop? Can't you just go out in the desert anywhere, throw a stone and dig up a cacti? I don't a cactus. The best part about this was Fox 5's headline, Henderson Cops Corral Cactus Crooks. So I guess the local media had a field day with this. This is one of the strangest stories I think we've seen in the entire history of this show. I, I can only imagine the video of the reporter like standing on the street outside of where they stole the cactus from and and they like you know all serious like and tonight we have these thieves that came in and stole a whole bunch of cactuses cacti damn it cacti <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some good news this week for people who love Diamond status at Caesars and the way to get it through Founders Card. Founders Card announced that they have come into a new contract with Caesars, at least through 2025. So this year, Founders Card members, including new members, because some had already been matched, will get diamond status. One of the new things about diamond status is that you have to earn 100 tier credits, apparently, to get the celebration dinner, I believe. So Founders Card saying that it doesn't include things that require tier credits like the Atlantis thing and the celebration dinner. And then if you go in the terms, Caesars says you need 100 tier credits, which isn't too bad most people should be able to earn that so i don't think that's too much so good news overall yeah it's good to see it back and i know that everybody was kind of stressing about this and i think that's the same setup if you earn it through the wyndham business card and do the match that way i think you still need to earn the 100 tier credits before you get the hundred dollar dinner which is basically what everybody wants the atlantis thing is you know somewhat useful but i don't think as many people take advantage of it as they do the free dinner so that's a you know it's good to see i still don't know if i'd pay 400 bucks to get a hundred dollar dinner for the card but if you can find some other uses for founders card or you get one of those limited time offers where it's like 200 bucks or 150 bucks Maybe it makes more sense then. Yeah, I totally agree. The Wyndham Business Earner card is certainly the better way to go. But it's good for people with Founders Card. And the Atlantis thing now, I think, requires 10,000 tier credits to get. But in the past, they haven't always enforced that. So who knows? Because basically, you're calling Atlantis. But uh, I've done that a couple times in the past. And uh, no rush to go back there. Uh, based on my previous experiences <laughs> you, you should uh, talk about your stay there no you can read the article uh, about it it was pretty horrible but that was a, a few years ago who knows if they've fixed it up since then yeah and i'm hopefully they did they i think they have new owners now atlantis is a cool place over the top a lot of good stuff but my last experience there was nightmarish to say the least and i'll put a link in the description people can read the article where i was accused of causing a flood of the entire tower and all kinds of other fun stuff. Uh, yeah, that what a great memory that was. Early 2020, right before the pandemic. One of my last travel experiences in Atlantis. But I had, did two trips there through Caesars Diamond. And it, it was a good benefit and certainly saved me a lot of money. Gave me a chance to experience it. And glad for that. So on social media this week, Main Street Station tweeted out the picture of their secret elevator. It's not really secret, right? It's right off of Main Street near that entrance. But a lot of people don't know if you go upstairs, there is Winston Churchill's snooker table. And that property has the old slots, a lot of stained glass, a lot of historical stuff. So I thought this would be a good you know, reason to talk about it again. We've talked on the show before. And of course, my favorite thing, peeing on the Berlin Wall. Yeah, it's like the most eclectic, random <laughs> comp compilation of stuff that you wouldn't expect in a casino, much less a Vegas casino. It doesn't really make any rhyme or reason how they put these things together, but it's kind of cool to check out and it's free. So just head up there and, and take a look. And you do love yourself some Berlin Wall. Who knows why it's behind a urinal, but it is. And a little tip, if it, the bathroom's empty, an attendant will escort females in there to see it. I wish that they would have been more, you know, equal in putting it in both places, you know, putting a piece in the female bathroom as well, but they didn't. And I will say that this is a big litmus test for me if you're a cool person or not. I once brought somebody to Main Street Station and showed them all this cool stuff, and they were not impressed, and I never talked to them again. I'm sorry, but I'm just like thinking this when you're talking about the women's bathroom, like the way the body anatomy works. I don't think women could see the Berlin Wall while they're peeing, so it wouldn't have the same effect. 
Yeah, but they could at least have a piece of it. Come on, equality here. But seriously, yeah. Mark, if people aren't impressed by not just the Berlin Wall, but just some of the cool things there and how unique this place is, then they don't appreciate Vegas for what it is. And that's just my opinion. I like Main Street Station. I've liked it for a long time. I didn't know, and I saw this in the Twitter thread, that there used to be a spiral staircase that went up to the top before Boyd Gaming owned it. And that would have been even cooler so the only way to get up there, the elevator, you get to look down on the casino, just walk around that place. It's pretty cool. Head off Fremont Street for a minute and take in some old Vegas. Yeah, I wish the beers were still as cheap as they used to be, but they're still better than a lot of places. And it's a craft brewery, so you get that aspect of it versus getting, you know, just the domestic beer everywhere else uh, for about the same price, if not better. So there's a little get your beer, go upstairs, take a pee, all the good stuff. Unfortunately, you can't play snooker anymore. You used to be able to play on that table, apparently. So, you know, progress. So let's head outside of Vegas. One of the cool things people do, especially Europeans, I've noticed, is they head out of Las Vegas to a lot of the national parks in southern Utah. Zion's only a couple hours away. Bryce Canyon, not too far. And even St. George is very beautiful. So just heading out of Vegas, you know, a good time. But in Zion National Park, they have this site called Angel's Landing. And I stumbled across a video about it. It looks terrifying. It's called the most dangerous hike in America. And apparently 14 people have been confirmed to die on this trail, but many think the number is a lot higher than that. It looks stunning, it looks beautiful, and I have no interest in doing it. Yeah, the last bit of the trail, they, they put in chains and stuff because people were having issues with it. It gets really tight, you know, just a, a couple like a couple feet across and you got cliffs on both sides. I definitely wouldn't want to do it. And there's even been like kids that have fallen, 13, 14 year old kids have fallen off of this so I, I don't know you need you now need a pass which is good i guess i still feel like there should be some type of test or, or something a climbing ability but even if you are a good hiker you never know you can slip at any time and we both have a friend that fell down a mountain in hawaii so this kind of hits home a little bit harder than it would otherwise uh luckily he survived uh, without anything major happening thousand foot fall i don't know how he did it but <laughs> i don't even think he knows how he did it but a crazy story we'll put a link to that too yeah mark and i did an episode of the miles memories podcast talking to our friend Ian. And in fact, he's the one who sent me the video of this hike because he had done it. The hike in Zion is 1500 foot elevation change from the bottom to the top. But just a reminder, Zion, beautiful, Southern Utah, beautiful. If you're looking for things to do, you've been to Vegas a lot of times, rent a car for the day, head out there, maybe spend the night out there, spend a couple days. It's certainly worth it. One of the most beautiful areas of the entire United States. And each national park has different scenery and things to do. And I just wanted to highlight that. And uh, let me know if you did the hike. Let us know in the comments. I'm sure people who have watched this show have done that hike. Is it worth it? You know, let us know. A lot of people don't realize how close Vegas is to so many national parks and different states, you know, multiple states and all that stuff. Plus, Red Rock and all that, all the things that the Nevada area has to offer. It really is a hiker's paradise if you want to go out and get away from the strip for a bit. As a reminder, we have our Patreon. $5 a month gets you access to our weekly after show. Lots of fun talking about Vegas, lots of behind the channel, all of that good stuff. Patreon.com forward slash MTM Vegas. Thanks to everybody who supports us over there. So good trop news, Mark, as we've seen green water all over the property and it basically going to crap before it closes in a couple weeks. We talked about that. I want to bring some positivity. We had a lot of questions about the stained glass and some of the other historical elements of Tropicana and what would happen. And while we still don't know all the specifics, they did release some information that they're working with you UNLV, the Neon Museum, and the Showgirl Museum to preserve some of the cool elements. So hopefully that means the stained glass ceiling will go somewhere. I would love to see it at the Neon Museum. I think that'd be a perfect home for it. Yeah, if they could put it like in the lobby or something when you first walk in there, I think that would be really cool and, and kind of get you kicked off on the on the right foot and everything. And hopefully they figure find one of the uh, sign that works out in the boneyard and everything like that. Neon Museum, we talked about it a lot of times, but if you haven't been, you know, and you love Vegas history, definitely go. Go at the Dusk Show when everything's all lit up. It's such a cool experience. We talked at the opening of the last show about those 3D printed vintage Vegas signs. So many people are like, just take my money. So hopefully the person who makes those, you know, open a shop, you'll make tons of money. Everybody wants them, including me. So uh, just, a, just a word for that. It was crazy to see how many people just absolutely want this vintage Vegas stuff. And, you know, they can love modern Vegas, but they want that old Vegas stuff. And, you know, part of it's nostalgia, but part of it was just so unique, all the designs, the neon, 
it wasn't like anything else in the world and it still stands out i think in people's memories yeah i think if somebody brought back a little bit of the the old school signs i, I think people would love it and we talk about that all the time i mean we we see billboards plastered everywhere and and video screens and everything it just doesn't give the same feel as you know blinking lights and all that stuff even if they are a pain in the butt to maintain and probably cost a ton of money to run I think it's worth it. So let's do a quick sports update. UNLV extended their three-point streak now to 1,227 games as unfortunately their season ended in the quarterfinals of the NIT tournament. Mark, don't make fun of UNLV. We know they didn't make the big show this year, but they were hoping to, you know, win the NIT or go deeper. But nobody can match that three-point streak. No, we should start like a pool, a betting pool or something of what game it will end on. Everybody throws in five bucks. And whenever it does end, you get the pot. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I, I mean, unfortunately, I think that they're so bought into this streak now that they're just taking three shots all the time. And the way the game is, too, you know, three-pointers are a bigger part of it. But, yeah, I think they went over 9 in the first half on three-pointers, and they keep trying. So it's going to be very difficult for them not to get this. They're going to have to complete off-night because I think the record is more important than winning, and maybe in some cases, uh, keeping this thing going. That's kind of the downfall of something like this is it's kind of in the focus of your mind. Like, you're not playing the game game anymore you're worried about hitting that first three and then once you hit the first three you move on get back into your normal thing but i'm sure it's in the back of everybody's mind especially if it rolls into the second half late in the second half like the stress building even if you're up by like 10 do you still jack up threes like it just it will probably get crazy at times but 1227 games that's just an insane amount of games in college basketball or any sport to do something over and over so congratulations to them on that hopefully a better season next year let's make the tournament the big tournament and uh, love to hear UNLV basketball in the news. So Fountain Blue is back with another offer. This is similar to the offer that they had a couple months ago, basically saying $130 minimum cost of rooms midweek, two night stay minimum, they'll throw $125 credit. When you add in the resort fees, it's about $400 total for two nights with $125 credit. Not bad if you wanna give a shot at the uh, newest casino on the strip. And the pool area is now open too, which is what I've been waiting for. So I gotta head over there. It's a decent offer if you wanted to check out Fountain Blue anyway i don't think it would get me to book it out and go out of my way it's not like over the top amazing so i wouldn't it wouldn't sway me either way but if i was planning on staying at fountain blue this is a great way to take advantage of it and then with that 125 bucks you can get like a breakfast for two people and remember that they have that match going on still so you can get silver status or gold status i think silver comes with what a hundred dollar credit uh, for food and beverage so depending on if you get silver or gold, you'll get a different credit. So you can get property credits there. And then people have been getting comp offers too when they match, which is pretty typical because they don't have a lot of your play information. So they're just hoping they match you from another casino. So if you have any other status with other casinos, remember that that's still going on. You should go to Fountain Blue Rewards. And even if you've signed up before, so you don't have to be a new member to get the match. They want people to come enjoy the property and uh, they want to give you a little credit along the way. So thanks again to Mark for using up his credit with me last time he was in town. Yeah, if you get the credit from matching the gold, then you can have breakfast for four people between the two. <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, it's all good. So big news in Neonopolis. Hammered Harry's is replacing Dick's last resort. Now, people know Dick's. It's at Excalibur. This is the place where you eat and they insult you during your meal. And Hammered Harry's apparently is the same thing. I can't really tell what the difference is. It's the same owner as Dick's Last Resort. Maybe they just thought that just a regular Dick's wasn't like the right vibe for Fremont Street, Neonopolis, so they wanted something a little different. Hammer and Harry's does have a few locations, but it still says service with an attitude. And Cat's Meow is there, owned by the same owners. And I bring this up because, you know, a lot of people don't know who owns these chains and some of the other reputable Las Vegas adult-oriented businesses that these people own. They're cool people, though. I met them when Dick's opened. I was actually at the grand opening of the Dick's at Neonopolis. So, yeah, we'll throw some of the uh, other places that they own around town up on the screen. Throw it up there. It's cool. I know people like that. You go, the food's not the best, but it's all about the experience, and, and the prices are usually a bit higher. But it, it's fun to do it every once in a while, so I'm glad that they still have something like that down on Fremont. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting brand, an interesting owner, and, you know, they have places in Vegas and in Pahrump, Mark, if that uh, is a little bit of a hint as to, to what they do. And Hammered Harry's actually does have a location at Larry Flint's Hustler Club, that rooftop bar there. Apparently, the food there is the hammered harry's so you know same owner and all of that so it, like i said fascinating las vegas place go check it out i don't know that much changed other than the name but uh, maybe other people can let us know in other neonopolis news crash and burn that new 
kind of skydiving themed bar on the top floor in Indianapolis has opened, although the skydiving attraction has not opened yet. I know they're gonna have the grand opening next month and I should be there to cover that. So we'll talk more about it when they get the full thing up and running. It's gonna be a challenging location. A lot of things have come and gone. It's really hard to get people up to those upper levels of Neonopolis, but uh, there is a lot of cool stuff in there and the Cat's Meow, another shout out to them. I love that karaoke club and uh, you know, give it a try. You know, Neonopolis isn't as bad as people have sort of said over the years. There was nothing to really draw me in in the previous years, but They've put a lot of effort into it, bringing in the new stuff. So hopefully this all works. I mean, if you think about what we talked about just in the last couple of shows with Glitter Gulch, the the Tiki Bar going in down there, Crash and Burnt, what a cool name. Cat's Meow and Hammer and Harry. Everybody's got great names. I, I give them all A pluses on the names. Uh, so it's cool to see like that area get built up a bit. And then, you know, we have Atomic Golf, which isn't too far away, too. So kind of north of the Strip is really in a renaissance of uh, bars and, and cool atmospheres to check out. And, of course, the whole Arts District all in that area, too, which has a ton of things. Esther's Kitchen opened up their new location. We didn't cover it on the show. Love Esther's Kitchen. Best sourdough in town great food and they like over doubled their size just around the corner on Main Street. So a lot happening there. Definitely head up to downtown Las Vegas, the Arts District and check that out if you're just somebody who heads, you know, who hangs out on the south end of the strip. There's so much more to do that's both tourist oriented. You'll find locals there too. It's a lot of fun and uh, good to talk about all this stuff. It needs a little bit more coverage, but new things are happening in downtown. And let's close with this, Mark. The Clark County uh, government came out with this report talking about the wins and losses from F1, but specifically a lot of the challenges around that. And there's some interesting insights in this, starting with like building the pit building, how they were just building it without permits and all kinds of crazy stuff, trying to get like last minute uh, additions there, how the traffic wasn't good, how, you know, a lot of the things we know. Also during the race, how some pedestrian bridges, specifically the one at Harmon, were blocked by F1 organizers, causing a lot of danger for pedestrians as, you know, people were backed up and they couldn't use the stairs and there was all kinds of problems with that. So, you know, this is basically saying all the bad things that happened, how we can fix them and, you know, what the impact was. And, you know, we've heard so many impacts, one and a half billion dollars, a billion dollars, $500 million. They say the total economic impact the county does was $884 million. Yeah, it's somewhere in the middle. I don't think anybody really knows. It's all just kind of made up stuff and estimates and you can't really tell compared because you don't know who's doing what, where, and you just kind of like take a stab at it. And that's what we see it scattered across the place. So I never take any of those numbers with anything other than a huge grain of salt, uh, you know, because it just it is what it is. They They put it into their slant, whatever works their narrative a lot of times but it's good to see them accepting you know some of the stuff that went wrong and we've talked about how people are trying to make this year's upcoming one a lot better and hopefully they make the improvements and and everybody feels included throughout the entire strip and it's just more of the atmosphere that we kind of expected the town to be versus just like focused on the high-end customer and and traffic and locals don't have to deal with the pain as much hopefully this time around yeah i like that the county is assessing this and coming out with like sort of true statements. It's not an attack on F1. It's saying, you know, what went right and what went wrong and everything from public works to the fire department, every sort of department chimed in. And I'll put a link to the report. You can read, you know, the good, the bad, but a few other things. They said that the Las Vegas Grand Prix spent $88 million on infrastructure improvements that'll benefit the people, I guess. But we still don't know if the county paid any of that. Remember, they demanded the county pay half of it. And I don't think that's ever been resolved. So maybe maybe Formula One is just absorbing that. And then when it comes to the visitors, they said Grand Prix visitors spent 3.6 times the typical traveler, stayed 4.1 nights, and spent more than $4,100 per trip, not including the ticket price. So, uh, you know, that's where they're saying that this is successful in that way. This sort of vibes with what all the casinos said. The lower end casinos said no, the higher end casinos said great. And this is sort of what we're seeing here. Yeah, they just need to figure out a way to get keep the high end customer happy, same amount of money, and then get the low end customer to come in or the normal guy that stayed away because they just thought this wouldn't be for them or whatever. You can still have your same Vegas experience in the southern part of the strip away from all of that. And I think that's what people need to realize. And the good news is county officials listening. They're listening to make it better. Locals hated this race. Let's hope that it becomes more successful because it's going to be here for at least two more years. Let's make it great. That's my hope. So let us know what you think about that. Hammered Harry's stealing cacti. I don't know. Crash Hit us up in the comments. <laughs> Crash and burn, baby. Hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you think. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. And we'll be back in a couple days with another show. 
Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Happy opening day weekend, everybody. Spring is here. Baseball. Valuable. I don't know how much you're selling cactus. Uh, <laughs> cacti, sorry. <laughs> I don't know how the hell to say cactus. You know, progress. But let's talk outside of Vegas. <laughs> what? Progress. <laughs> <laughs>